All right, in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I think is the most important part about painting a landscape. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So what I think is the most important part about painting a landscape is how you start. More specifically, how to simplify a scene and block in the big shapes and the big values correctly. If you can do that, if you can block in the scene and, and simplify it, it's not an easy thing to do. It takes, it takes a lot of practice to train your mind and your eye to condense things, to simplify it. You know, you want to look at a scene and break it down into its big shapes. This is going to give you a good start to the painting. It's going to help you when you come to tricky, you know, detailed areas or areas that are, you know, you might find difficult. This is going to help you tackle those areas. It's going to help you establish the correct color and value relationships. So you don't paint one section and it doesn't relate well to another section. If you have some mountains and you paint them too light compared to your sky or your trees, being able to do this is going to give you a great first step into developing the scene. It's also going to help you paint a lot faster, which if you do any plain air painting, this is huge uh, because I think you'll find out how much information you get when you block in a scene and you get the major uh, shapes and values and colors down quickly at the beginning yeah there's still a lot to do and there's a lot of uh, subtle value shifts and color shifts within these big shapes but you've gotten the big picture it's there and and it's just a matter of working what's going on uh, within these big shapes that you've blocked out. And it's gonna make clear what is most important in the scene. So when I say see the big shapes, what I mean is condensing uh, together a lot of the smaller shapes. You can't be worried about small details. Like I'm not talking about identifying objects. I'm talking about identifying big shapes. And you're gonna see those by squinting your eyes. If you squint your eyes, it gets rid of details and you're just blocking in the big value masses that you see. And this could be blocking in two separate objects together as one big mass. You know, this isn't an easy thing to do. It takes practice to be able to do this. I know that I struggled doing this for the longest time. And the main thing that you wanna consider here is value, because when you squint your eyes, you're also getting rid of color too. You can always adjust color as you go. It's more important to get the values down correctly, especially to see, you know, the big picture of the painting you want your value relationships to be working. If your tree is darker than your ground, you wanna make sure you get that in early. You can adjust the color later, but you wanna see everything working in the right values right at the beginning. To kind of show you what I see when I'm squinting my eyes, I have this Photoshop filter, which I, I use sometimes to just help me simplify a photograph. Um, but to kind of demonstrate the best I can uh, with a filter of what squinting eyes is, it's this filter right here. And it just blurs everything. You know, I'd have known artists that, that wear glasses and they'll just take their glasses off and then pop them back on while they're painting just to see, you know, get rid of detail in the big shapes. Like I can't stress enough how important squinting your eyes and getting rid of details are. And like, not only at the beginning sections of the painting, but later on, like I find myself whenever I get lost or if I'm in like a detailed area and I'm like, wait, what value is this? Wait, what color am I doing? Like, am I getting, anytime I feel like I'm getting confused or lost or overwhelmed with what I'm painting, I just literally step back, I lean back, you know, I make sure my hand is fully extended. I squint my eyes and I just paint what I see. Like I trust the squint. I'm gonna make a t-shirt that just says, trust the squint or squint your eyes or get rid of detail. I don't know, it's, it's so important. It's worthy of making a shirt for. Another thing I do sometimes on Photoshop is I'll just take the paint tool and I'll literally paint in these big shapes. I'll get rid of the detail and I'll put big shapes of flat color to just get a sense of the composition and, and how everything is working. If I can see that it's looking good when I'm doing this, then I can count on it turning out to be a good painting. Now, when I'm trying to figure out what color to put down for these big masses, I'm trying to find an average of the color. Again, I'm finding this by squinting my eyes and painting what I see. And the color you're gonna get is an average of all the colors pretty much. It's not gonna be the darkest dark. It's not gonna be the lightest light. It's gonna give you an average. And so you got like kind of an average color all the way around your painting. And this is gonna allow you to push lights and darks. So you're kind of starting in the middle and you can kind of push dark, push light. It kind of gives you freedom 
to, to bounce back and forth and slowly dial in your painting to where you want it. And since you're not worried about getting into any detail at this point, it's very easy to adjust. Many times I will you know, put in a color or a value for something and as I work the rest of the painting, blocking in these average value masses, uh, I, I wanna go back and adjust and it's easy at this point it's easy to adjust like that's why we're doing this because it's gonna be a lot harder like if you go and paint a bunch of detail on something and you realize you kind of just painted it like in the correct values the whole thing is too light or too dark then you just wasted all that time putting in all this detail like you want to make sure the big masses are working value wise because it's also going to keep you on track because if i you know have like a shadowed section on the ground i know there's a bunch of other different values working within that shadow a bunch of other different colors happening but i i know my limits like i can only push them so light or else it's going to start looking like it's not in the shadows it's going to keep me in the right range and that goes for the rest of the painting with these big uh value masses you can see here in this example like i'm not worrying about individual uh, palms on the palm trees like I'm just blocking them in as one big mass at first now a good thing to be aware of with landscapes are the value planes uh, most of the time in a landscape your brightest uh, value is going to be your sky then followed by your ground plane so your ground plane is going to be slightly darker than your sky and then any slanted planes like uh, uh, mountains hills are going to be a little darker and your darkest uh, objects are going to be any upright objects like trees, houses, people. So you can see in this example that I'm painting, my trees are definitely darker than my ground and my ground is definitely darker than my sky. And you might not get these right off the bat. Like you might have to put one in and then you start putting the other value planes in and you realize, oh, like I got to go back and adjust that other value plane. Like that's, that's perfectly fine. That is what this process is for, to get it right now when it's not a big deal to change it. You want to get everything working on this level first before you go forward with detail. Like here, if I had my trees too light and they were lighter than my ground plane, it wouldn't look good. And this can be difficult. Like you see these shadows in the ground, you think shadows, ground, dark. Yes, they are going to be darker, but it's not going to be as dark as say, you know, the darks in the trees. Same thing with the lights on the ground. They might be pretty light, but they're not gonna be lighter than the sky. Now, yes, there are exceptions like snow and, and really white sand and stuff. Like I'm speaking generally, you can look for these things to be true. Now, when you're blocking these things in, don't be afraid of making them very blocky. Uh, like these palm trees here, like they're, I'm not like creating the little palm leaves on the edges, like that will come later. You can always cut back in with negative space and you're gonna have to make uh, the decision on what you think uh, is is worthy of leaving space to put paint on it or knowing that you can paint over it and you know cut back in sometimes I will leave you know like if I'm painting a tree like I will leave like a big section open where I know there's gonna be sky coming through that big section but I don't always do it e you know everywhere I just rather you err on the side of making too big of blocky shapes then not. I don't want you pulling out a small brush at this point and like trying to get, you know, at like these little edges on the trees and get grab that leaf and that palm and this like, don't worry, make it big, make it blocky. You can always cut back in later and dial in the edges and the shapes to where you want. Now, when you do do that, when you do cut back in uh, to a shape like this, like I'm gonna do with the trees here, whether it's, you know, putting palms that spray out into the sky or using sky cutting it back into the palms, you're gonna really wanna be aware of cleaning your brush when you go from one to the other. So if I have some sky color and I paint it up into my trees and I, I get some of that tree color onto my brush while I'm painting the sky, I wanna make sure I wipe my brush with a paper towel, rinse it in my paint thinner, you know, make sure it's clean before I go back in because I don't wanna contaminate that sky color. That's what happens a lot of times is people get a little lazy, I do myself, and you try and do multiple strokes and you're picking up paint and, and putting it in areas it shouldn't be. And it goes the same way. Like you know, if I'm painting these palms going into the sky, I wanna pull one into the sky, wipe my brush, clean it, go back again. Because if I don't, I'm gonna pull that sky color into my trees and I don't want that. Now, if you have trouble doing it, like Chris, like when I try and cut back in my trees, this won't go. Make sure you're using thick enough paint. I admit it does take time to 
learn how to handle the paint, when to make it a little thinner, when to make it a little thicker. You know, yes, these initial block in layers that I'm doing are going to be thinner. Like they're not a wash by any means. I mean, some artists do do that. You can do that. Some do start out with a wash. Um, but for this one, I'm not, it's, it's, it's thicker. It's not the thickest I can go by any means. It's, it's kind of just thick enough to cover up, um, the canvas. I still have a long way to go in terms of making the paint thicker. So if you're having trouble cutting back into something, look to make your paint thicker. If you feel like you've gotten the paint as thick as you can, it still won't work. Uh, try scraping that area down and starting again by not starting out with as thick of paint. Now, a helpful exercise you can do is just get a scrap piece of canvas from a canvas pad or something and just make marks on the canvas using thicker paint, thinner paint. Get a feel for what you can do with the paint, what you can paint over, you know, how thick you can get, how thin you can get, what layers over what. Doing that for just, you know, 10 minutes or so can really give you a feel for you know, how thick or thin you can go with paint and what you can do with it. So once you do block in these big masses of, of value and color, you're gonna keep doing pretty much that same process with but just smaller and smaller shapes. And again, you don't wanna develop one area too quickly. You wanna kind of develop everything as you go. So I'll build a little bit in the trees, move to the ground, build a little there you know, come back, you know, just build everything around because I'm constantly comparing, you know, it's, it's all about relationships. It's, it's comparing. It's like, is this, how's this tree looking compared to the ground, compared to the sky, compared to the ocean, the ocean compared to the, the trees and just constantly comparing. So you don't want to get too far down the road in one area without the other parts up on that level too, because you need to compare it. Like you need to see how everything is working together. You don't want to get too close to your painting and get kind of tunneled in on this one area and lose sight of the big picture. So as I go, I tend to get thicker and thicker with my paint. I start using a smaller and smaller brush. I'm still squinting my eyes every now and then trying to keep in mind the big picture, making sure everything is working together. All right. I hope this is helpful. Like I hope you can take what I've explained in this video. Maybe I didn't explain it well. If I didn't <laughs> leave a comment in the comment section, uh, I'll try and explain it there more if you have questions. Uh, but I really want you to try this out on your next landscape and, and see if you have a better result. If you do, you know, post it on Instagram. If you're on Instagram and tag me, I'm on Instagram at uh, Forza43. I can't promise that I will, you know, comment and give feedback on everybody. Um, I do the best that I can, but I would like to see anybody that uh, tries to implement this uh, strategy that I talked about in this video. If you want to see the full version of uh, this painting tutorial, it is on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Now, if you're wondering, do I have an oil painting course? I almost do. I am getting it ready. I'm probably going to release it at the beginning of the year. If you don't want to miss out for when I release that, you should sign up for the Paint Coach newsletter, which I'll put a link to in the description below. All right. I'm Chris Pornatero here telling you to go get painting. Well, look at that. You made it all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate that. May I suggest hitting that subscribe button? Also, you'll probably like this video too.